Martin, thank you so much for these, uh, I would say, far too kind words. Um, I'm feeling honored. Aber zuerst müssen wir das unter Beweis stellen. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, but first, we will need to prove them. Ladies and gentlemen, we will present to you today a product that we have been working on for the last seven years. We have international guests from over ten countries, and so the presentation will be translated, so that everyone can understand. Die Ansprachen werden auch entsprechend übersetzt, damit unsere internationalen Gäste uns verstehen. Und wir gehen einfach mitten hinein in die ganze Vorstellung. Now we will jump right in. Not everyone knows us so well, but when you came up the stairs, you may have seen the history walk. We have recorded a written history from the past 200 years. Those of you who do know us likely know us from our passports, which we deliver to many countries in the world. And of course, our main product, the passports for Austria. It's in our name. We are a printing house. Until 12 years ago, that was our main purpose, and we fulfilled this role with significant pride. Also, about 10 years ago, we started updating and changing our machinery, and have changed and advanced into a high-security technology company. Since that time, we have begun adding personalization, writing personal information on the chip, not just sending a precursor or preliminary product out. We personalize more than 2 million personal data sets, highly securely over our equipment. For us, this means not only receiving the data and using it, but also deleting it securely, certified by national control mechanisms. New products and equipment. Then five years ago, the next step. We took our technology further and started working on our first app development. We have not outsourced this effort, but rather this is something that, as a security company, you need to do in-house. We have programmed apps that, for example, can read the chip within the passport. This is not a purchased stock picture. It also is the Staatsdruckerei, our company today. These are our developers that work on high security systems in a highly secure environment, not just two iMacs put together in a garage. This allows us to provide customers in 60 countries worldwide with varying products, from passports to complete identity management systems, to databases, birth records, etc. That is the short history of our company. Now I want to tell you about two particularly exciting updates that have come about in the last few weeks and months. We are particularly proud of these. And I want to tell you today that we will now not only be sending out the laissez-passer booklets to the responsible parties of the European Union, but also personalizing them with personal information within our own facilities. Security from Austria for the European Union is not only supporting the Staatsdruckerei, but also emphasizes Austria as a trusted producer location. The second update is that we are a unique company in that we do not get rid of old technology to bring in a new one, but rather we keep the tradition of using old, trusted technology. We have invested in a new Intaglio printing press. This is a strong 2 million euro investment, a meaningful and central one for us, a technology that so many others stopped investing in. These were the short updates. 200 years of identity are also 200 years of OSD. We incorporated that into our logo and branding years ago, with the plan for developing from the paper permit to the passport to the passport with a chip. And that brings us to what we want to present to you today. How did we get here? Over seven years ago, we started with our first detailed and specialized lecture series, specifically about digital identity systems. In 2012, we had our first large academy event, where we thought about future scenarios for 2025. The following year, we selected scenario A, Touch the Future 
with the focus of participation and e-government. How can one use this positively? And what positive possibilities are there for technology? We have been able to work on and present this information in collaboration with many of you who are also sitting here today. In 2014, we added something to it, the trend report that Martin referred to earlier. We reviewed the core of the issue. If the government provides digital identity to its citizens, what is the core element? It is the trust that the government will handle this data correctly, trusting the digital ability of the state. We identified 12 meaningful trends in this trend study that could affect the trust one has, and thus we can use this information to increase the trust through respecting these things, and understanding that trust can be lost when these items are not respected. 200 years of identity, 200 years of OSD. What have we learned about digital identity in the last seven years? There is so much that it has to be massively reduced, so today I will focus on three points. I want to start with the user, who it's all about. We reviewed many systems in the world, and when you talk about digital identity, then the key term is EID, which I am putting in the middle of the topic bombardment, with other terms like mobile ID, smart ID. And there are certificates, and chip readers, and two-factor authentication. And what exactly is the digital signature for the citizen? Can anyone explain this? Difficult. When you live in Austria, you are going to have to deal with expired certificates, which is a very specific issue. It is, however, for the users very difficult to understand. And that was our analysis, because many of these systems are based on technical concepts, or on security concepts, or on legal concepts, and thus influence the point of view in some cases relevant to this topic. All of these topics are dealing somehow with the user. What we found out, however, and what we determined and work into the heart of our product is that the user must be at the center of it all by himself. Otherwise, he will not accept it, even when the times change. We have to think user-centric, and we must stay user-focused and never leave the user behind. And that is what the topic EID looks like for the user in almost all of the countries worldwide. Some more and some less so. And when you look more closely, you see the more difficult problem, like a Gordian knot. The second, very central and important theme, what is the driver for identity? What is the driver for the most developments that we generally take on? There are a big number of exponential technologies behind that, and if you want to get to know these topics from the top source, then you need to talk to the experts, the Singularity University, which is where we went. This picture shows how we view things and how our brains are programmed. We are linearly programmed, but technologies develop differently. The technologies develop exponentially, and there are many variations as to how. During the first phase of development, we are very often disappointed, deceived and disappointed, because exponential development in the beginning is not always what we first envisioned. Then comes the tipping point, and suddenly everything turns around. That is the true test. If you have properly prepared, then you are swimming on top of the wave, but if you have not, then you are being pushed forward by the wave. Then you are either in chaos or riding the wave of amazement. When you take this further, then there are a vast number of topics, and I only want to touch on it. In blue we have the building blocks, the technological building blocks. In green we have the innovation catalysts, allowing for many different scenarios with many different technologies on the grey line. You can see at the very top very interesting topics such as artificial superintelligence, radical life extension. These are the topics that are currently trending because digitization is already running. Martin talked earlier about the technology skeptics, and thus I am bringing you a few examples. The largest hotel or accommodations company of the world does not have a single hotel, at most an office. The largest media company, or the most popular media company to be correct, does not write a single message themselves. 
Uber, the largest taxi company in the world, does not have a single taxi. They maybe have a few company cars somewhere, but not more. Skype and WeChat are the largest essential providers of communication infrastructure, but do not own a single antenna. Netflix is the largest provider of films and TV shows, but does not have a single theatre. Google and Apple are the largest software companies, but in reality, except for a few, they do not make any of the many, many apps used in their stores and on their products. Alibaba, the largest retail trader, does not have a single warehouse. Digitization is happening now, and is really already here. Thus, we have to react to this topic, take the new technologies on and also prepare the topic of identity. And the topic in this case is digitization. I can assume that 80, 85, 90 percent of all the people that are sitting here had at least one, if not more, of the devices on the screen, or they have them lying around somewhere in a box or in the basement. You have replaced all of them with just one device. In 2007, the iPhone revolutionized the world. Who can remember what it cost? Ballpark. Any guess? Yes, 499 euro. That was the average. Then we were not part of the masses, not everyone had one. Then we said, no one could ever afford that, that'll never work. This is a ZTE Grand S, an Android cell phone from 2015, with an excellent camera and a huge display, for 39 euro. We have moved to mainstream, and whoever does not believe it can ask the statistic Austria. 70% of Austrians use mobile internet as of 2014, so that statistic is already old. 65% use a smartphone, and when they use a smartphone, they use apps. Single-purpose apps is the keyword. Everything that should stay at the tips of their fingers is part of the app. So we take more and more of these things into the apps. Loyalty cards, credit cards, debit cards, or whatever moves from the consumer's wallet to their smartphone. Right now we have it in both places. Sooner or later though, this system will break, and by and by the wallet will also disappear, and the smartphone will take the center stage. Obviously, it will happen. Most will agree with this. One says, it happens but I don't agree. And the other says, it happens and it's perfectly fine with me. But right now there is a problem with that. There are a few cards that do not fit in. Even when you try, it just does not quite work right. That is the topic that we are going to review today. Those were the three main reasons that we have been arguing for the last seven years. The Gordic knot cannot really be broken apart in this case. It is much more complicated. You have to take every individual strand and very carefully pull it out, look at it, think about it and decide how to bring it out. The security, the usability, all of this must work together and then you come to a few topics. And we believe we have made a huge breakthrough in our thought process. What does one need to consider in our thought process? I have pulled out five topics that highlight our solution. We want technology agnostic solutions. What does that mean? It is a cool word, but correctly used, it means that when you only consider NFC, I do not think that the story works. When you only consider Bluetooth, it just is not going to work. And when you only bet on the SIM card, it will also not work. Using one of these things, as long as it is there, yes, of course, any time. However, they will disappear one after the other, and new ones will come in to replace them, and you will be pushed into a technology corner. Therefore, technology agnostic. The only constant that we experience is the topic online. Therefore, we say that this subject online needs to be built into the basis, supported for its own sake, through other technologies, but the core needs to be online. How can this work? The smartphone is the most unsecure place in the world. Yes, in many instances. Thus, one has to do it right. And we think that we found the right way. Our process consists of three steps, and that you will see a few more times today, and keep hearing. The three-step process. We start the app. We link to another user or person or system that we want to give the information to, and we approve only the information we want. That up there is the cloud. We cannot do anything anymore without the cloud. We also believe that this is good, because one one can protect a central system better and the information is saved in the cloud. When I start my app, 
Then the data moves with a short-term token, a number that is only valid for a few seconds on this smartphone. The app is started. My data is downloaded on my smartphone and I can view it myself. I have this token on the app and then comes party number two that wants to know something from me. I can link myself to them and send him the number. No data goes directly from smartphone to smartphone, but rather the data is in the cloud and on my phone up until this point. Then the other party says, I would like to have your ID card, and sends the question with the time-limited token to a central server. And the central server says, hmm, yes, everything is correct. Yes, number number is correct. Then it asks the user, would you like to give your data to this person, and which information? Specifically, which information? Lisa in this picture says, yes, give over the information. The central server evaluates, and then the information is transferred to the party requesting the information. This process, of course, takes milliseconds, but I wanted to take you through the process so that you have an idea of how the process works. This is naturally not the only security concept, but rather the central element of the system. The security is in the process and not the hardware. What about when we are offline? If this is an online system, then will it not work? No, we say online is the central element. That means it must always work. And for the offline case, we have also created a solution. In the Staatsdruckerei, there is no working without a backup. Therefore, we also have a backup plan here. We work together with the company You Smile, a research institute at the University of Linz that works on securely providing identity on a SIM card. And what about for the police? Which fallback mechanisms, which backups are there when we have to operate an online system? That is a central point for control. We save offline tokens on these smartphones. These offline tokens are also available when the user is not online. These offline tokens can also be evaluated by an officer with other systems. For example, many governments of the world are already using radio communication systems, even the older versions. For those who are not working with this every day, think about your old Nokia 6210 from back in the day. Even with these pieces of equipment that have a small data channel when they are digital two-way radios, with these you can transfer a code and get get key information back, online key information. This is still much more valuable than an offline document that is perhaps 10 years old, that you would normally be checking. And if all else fails, there is still the last fallback possibility, to call in the information to the headquarters through the radio, where it can be checked. On security, so many concepts would appear that the whole wall would become white. Thus, we will get rid of a few right away, and I will only go into detail on a few, the ones that we have time for. Please look at the cubes which I would like to bring your attention to for the first time now. There, we will later give you the opportunity to try out our app for yourselves. Open ID Connect. We work with standards. We are not creating everything from scratch, but rather using central, leading standards that are already in the world and use them to create our system. OSD Scrum Agile Programming. We have developed our own Agile Programming methodology for security. There didn't used to be any. We support BPKs. Everyone from Austria and who works in this field knows this, but no one else does. Field-specific personal codes. This systematic of Austrian data protection can, of course, be integrated in this system. And now I come to a very interesting point, revoking of certificates, erasing ID cards from far away. That does not exist right now. Today, when you lose a document, in the best case, it will be thrown into the next trash can, because the thief only wanted the cash and was not interested in the documents. In the worst case, your identity will be misused, and in the absolute worst case scenario, your identity will be used to plan or execute a terrorist attack. If the ID card is on my smartphone, I can revoke it, and the smartphone cannot pull up any data. I can then erase the stolen ID card remotely. And we offer online checks and in-depth checks, because the infrastructure will be made available for the police force, as it will be possible to check more than only the ID card. Biometry FIDO, an abbreviation that we have to explain. The FIDO Alliance, what I consider an extremely central point for tonight, well, it is not yet evening, but it is dark in here, so you can use that as an illusion of evening. The FIDO Alliance sets the world standard for secure authentication and identification on the Internet. They are a huge alliance that is made up of all the large American and at the same time also European companies. We have been a part of it for two years. BSI also joined this year. It will be the world standard and we have already integrated it into our system and what we can show you later.
The main idea is relatively easy to explain. That is an American slide, showing that you can transfer a minimum of $10,000. Less does not work. You place your finger on it, and it works. It really works like this, and we can also show you that later. Data quality. What do you have to watch out for? For us, it is very important that the data coming to your smartphone, to say it in Austrian, keeps us grounded. We need a circular, unadulterated, high-quality control. In Austria, this is currently taking place in the government agencies. There, at least every 10 years, when you get a new passport, your identity will be confirmed physically on the spot. To ensure high data quality, all of the identification systems have to be together in one place. It would not be possible to do this for the user to have a driver's license app that works on Model A, a membership card that works on Model B, and a car registration certificate that works on another one. It all has to work with the same box. But we cannot build a super register of information. That would be against all data protection laws, so we have to leave the data in the different registries. Good thinks one person or another. I also heard something like that, but the issue with the distribution often does not quite add up. Austria is way ahead of the curve, but it is also not really fully in the masses. We believe we will take exactly what we were talking about before. We will take the circular, unadulterated, high-quality control and use it. The government agencies do it. And why wouldn't we link a digital identity automatically with the process of issuing the physical document when the identity is already being controlled? Then we do not need an individual process. We can use existing ones in functional infrastructures, at least in Austria. In other countries, that can be completely done by another data source. Perhaps other countries can use the data from mobile phone network operators as the best data source for a solution. When you summarize all of these topics that we have just talked about, you can start to build up a picture let's say, an incomplete picture. Then you have a few important building blocks. You can recognize that all the databases connect to the ID platform to provide their information. Altogether, they end up in one place. The identity and the basis for that is identity control. When you do that, and that is what we believe we have achieved, then we are able to bring your identity securely to your smartphone. Usable, available and highly secure. With that, we bring security in the physical world and in the digital world together. And that is the coolest part of the story. It's not an ID card and something for an EID, but rather it's both in one. It is an integrated identity management system. So, and now comes the moment I have been very excited about, and the team that worked on it too. I would like to introduce Mia. We had to give our brainchild a name, Mia. My Identity App. This is not just an app, but also a background system. Mia, a feminine name, a young name, somewhat hip, somewhat short, somewhat fast, exactly where we want it to be. Because Mia is an app, it also has an app logo, and this is what it looks like. And what does it look like on a smartphone? This is what it looks like on a smartphone. Do you want to see it? I would really enjoy it if I could show it to you. So, here comes the demo. And now the exciting moment where we see what works. So, in this case, we are going to take my real iPhone. This is not a pre-prepared device, but a real live phone that I am plugging in. We will make it a bit bigger so that you can actually see something. Then we can also turn on the screen when we have it working. That's always the big question in the story, will it work? And there we have it. You can see on the lower right, next to Uber and next to Slack, Mia. And when I start Mia, then it immediately prompts me. It wants my fingerprint. That is the system that we utilized from the iPhone, the Touch ID. There is also a solution for Android. I place my thumb on it and then I am in. Everyone that uses an iPhone is familiar with this. And this is the start screen of the app. We are really a single-purpose app. We have very few functions, and the ones we have are built simply. I see, when I take the picture, when I load the portrait gallery, I see all of the pictures from all of the ID documents that are stored in the databases that are connected. I would like to select the picture with the red background, so I pick it, and here it is. I can look at my address on the map, and I can send that instantly to anyone else who wants to know it. 
And this is the ID section, online information from the registry. Second section, the cards. When I click on my cards on the bottom, I can see here, for example, my driver's license that we have placed here as an example. I can also see only the fields that are filled out, in contrast to the physical card where you often cannot find anything because there are a thousand fields there and only a third of them are filled out. I have my car registration here too. You can see that the data is downloaded from the registry and I can just scroll through and I can search it here. It is also definitely possible to build in additional functionality. For example, I could add a weight calculator that automatically checks if I am allowed to pull this trailer with my car. So there are thousands of possibilities for additional features and functions. We have added a third card as an example of that, the healthcare card. In Austria, that might be the e-card, but there is some sort of card and system in most of the countries in the world. I also see that I have another card. Stefan Vogel, a colleague, let me borrow his e-card for a time. So now I can look at everything, and it is perhaps very interesting. Another feature I want to perhaps share with you, the timeline. This is a very important function. We record every transaction, every process that you make with this system that you are going through with me on a timeline. That means you could always look back to see when you gave what information to whom. I normally do not remember after two days who I showed which ID to and when. This is the protocol, also not saved on the phone, but always available to access. So now it would be boring if I did everything on my own. We want to send ID information from one person to another, and thus I ask Sebastian Zehetbauer to join me on the stage, so that we can look at things in a more interactive manner. Hello Sebastian. Hello Lucas. What are we going to do now? We are going to go through a few scenarios. We want to show you the example cases, and you will see here that there are orange numbers, and here, orange numbers. Afterwards, you will have the chance to go to the cubes and look at the corresponding scenarios, and look at the process and try it out yourselves. We want to really put it into your hands and have you try it out. Please use this chance to try this out yourself, to try it in your own hands, in the best case for all five cases. How does this work now with identification? You will remember start, link and approve. Easy process, so we can do it quick. We will take a second iPhone and hook it up. We can display it, and there you have it. So, what do you need for an ID? Let's say I want to sell Sebastian a car. Then we have a sales contract filled out, and Sebastian wants to know if I really gave him the right information on the document. And I, as commonly done in this case, would ask for your driver's license. That means I click on Ask for, select the driver's license and request to see the driver's license. Because we are using two iPhones, a scan window opens up here on top. The iPhone currently does not support NFC for us to use. I can say on my page, OK, I want to give him my document, and I click on Handout. We are linked in this moment, when Sebastian scans the barcode which is displayed on my iPhone. And only this number will be given to his smartphone. Then comes the interesting moment. On my phone I get the confirmation question. Do I want to give Sebastian my driver's license and the picture? Then I think, actually, why does he need my driver's license? He does not need to know which class of driver's license I have, or if I need contact lenses or glasses or anything else. So I will not allow it. Deny. And there it is. You deny the request. No data transmitted. And Sebastian sees, your request has been denied. Sebastian, you do not need so much information from me. In reality, I probably only need your picture, your name and your birth date, so that I can compare them with the sales contract. Exactly. I click again on Ask For, and this time I choose ID card. I click on Handout, and the system requests a token so that we can link our phones. And then it is time to release the information. I am asked for name, birth date and picture. Yep, that works. Then he can make sure the picture is me and can check the information in the sales contract. I click on handout and the information is sent to him. And on my smartphone I can see Lucas's picture that I can compare with his face, his name and his birthday. And this information I can compare with the sales contract. So now we can both see what just happened on our timelines, because we both have a record of it. For me, on the white iPhone, you can see on the page in the second row from the top, a red hand. At first I denied the request for the driver's license, because that was too much information. Then he asked for my name, birth date and photo, and I said yes. And here I know that I also sent it to him. You can also see on Sebastian's phone on his list something that says 23 hours. What is that? We looked for a classic Austrian middle ground solution. 
We thought, when I only display the information for a second and it is suddenly gone again, then that is impractical. Perhaps five minutes later, I want to look again. What was his name again? Who is that? Yes, therefore we said for 24 hours he can look up the information as needed. Then it is gone. He could, however, any time take a screenshot during any of these 24 hours. That's a topic we would like to look at now in detail, because he can take a screenshot and then he suddenly has pictures of me on his smartphone. What can we do then when everyone takes screenshots and the picture is distributed? We definitely will not leave that unsecure, but rather we have found a way to make the picture secure and we do that based on a simple formula. We say portrait plus Mia equals a happy portrait. We do this with stenography. Who knows what stenography is? So, a few hands, very good. Were those just my co-workers or others? <laughs> Stenography, as shown here, does nothing else but embedding secret information into a picture. That means that every time we include a certain amount of information in each photo that is sent to another smartphone. What's the advantage of that? Every picture is suddenly unique, even though it looks the same for human eyes. When I suddenly find a picture of myself on Google that I never uploaded, that someone else might have taken from the ID handout process, then I can track it. How much information is saved into the photo is dependent on the data security regulations of each country. Depending on how much or little information is included, it is easier for the user to discover where it came from, perhaps also through a central system. So, we create photos and we create secure photos, because data security is our highest priority. It is on my smartphone, and how does it get sent over? Specifically, how can I send a card when it is on my smartphone, and how does it get sent over? How limited am I? How limited am I? How limited am I? We think we make it much simpler. Sebastian wants to try out my car once before purchasing. He needs my car registration so that he can test drive it, and that works as easy as it can be. I go to my car registration and say, bottom right, share this card. Then it asks, how long do you want to give it to him? I say that he will not drive it for more than one week, and then we do the same process as before. We link our smartphones. Because it is an iPhone, we do that with a barcode, a relatively old technology, but we use everything we have. I get the confirmation question. I have to release my information again. Sebastian wants my car registration. I say, OK, that's what we agreed. And Sebastian has the card he needs. And now I can see the card. I have the license plate number and the picture. I can look at the registration on my phone and see all of the information as we explained before. I have the card pictured in my cards and here at the top the matching license plate number. On mine, you can see the small symbol displayed at the top right on the registration. I can see there that my card was given to someone else. Now it is 30 minutes later and he is back and now we want to take back the whole thing. How can I do that? I go to my timeline where the action is displayed. I go to shared cards and I see that I have shared three of my cards in total. On top is the registration I gave to Sebastian. He is back from the test drive and he does not need it anymore. So I click on X and the registration is immediately taken away from him and it is no longer in my shared cards. I can go to my timeline and see at the very top that the card is expired and I can no longer use it. That's how easy it will be to send cards in the future. Thank you. And just as easily and securely, you will be able to prove your identity and to handle your documents. So we also want to show you a second situation, checking someone's age. For this, we have the very interesting task of connecting an Android phone on a projector. You would think that this was very easy in 2015, but we were very surprised yesterday. 
Right now, it is working, so we will use it. And we have set up the following scenario. I am part of the company Acme Security, and today I am at Club U5. For those of you who live in Vienna, you know there is no U5, but it's close enough. And so it is 3 a.m., and Sebastian wants to go into the club, but I am the bouncer, and I have to make sure that he is allowed to come in, and that he is actually over 18. For that, we will use the NFC telephone that we have and are using in this case, and put them close to each other. And we have to get close enough with the cables here. And sometimes, ah, now it works. Sometimes it works, and sometimes not. We have to be close enough that it cannot be picked up by someone else. And Sebastian has the question on his phone already. The club U5 would like a picture from me, and also know if I am old enough to enter the club. I want to go in, so I click on Handout. And I did not get a picture, so we will have to do it again. Sebastian, we allowed too much time to pass between the commands. This time I will say yes immediately, because I want to get into the club quickly. So I can see a photo of Sebastian that I can compare, even in smoke at 3 in the morning. Maybe I drank a little myself, and when I drank too much I can also make the picture large enough, that I can make sure it really is him, and I can also see a green check mark. That means I know he is over 18. I did not see his birthday and I do not need it. I just need to know that the government says he is over 18, and that it's actually he who is in the picture. I cannot do it another way to get anonymously into a club. And so we just want to show off the features. That is how we use verified information while maintaining anonymity. I think that this could also be a big step forward for youth protection. That was the case Verify Age. And if you want to try it yourself with the NFC features, then you can come to Cube 2. Case 3. The one that you probably figured would come eventually. How does this work at a roadside check? In this case, we assume there is already a very good established infrastructure in place. That could be a device with a large display, so that the authorities can see more information at once. We have therefore used an iPad in this case, and of course we use a second device when it really works. And here we have an iPad lying around. And this code is only for here, so that I can remember it, not for you guys. And we went a step further in order to show you how a roadside check could work. We believe that the ability to use a digital ID is the ideal starting place or the tipping point to create a digital infrastructure for the authorities. We have installed a mobile workplace app, very, very rudimentary, just as an example for a possible utopia country, a mobile workplace for police officers of the future. In the first case, we want to show you the roadside check, the classic traffic stop. The first thing that happens is that I stop Sebastian and I scan his barcode. When I can find it, it is turned around. Let's turn it the right way so that it will work better. OK, now we have it. And now, with fast speed, it went to the central system, and I can see Sebastian's driver's license and vehicle registration, since I am an officer of the police. I hope you can forgive my impersonation of public authority. That basic set of information that we chose in this case can be more or less, depending on the data protection laws. I can also enlarge this picture of Sebastian at 3 a.m. in the morning on the highway with thick fog and display it brightly on my iPad. What other options do we have? Sebastian was speeding through the village and he's going to get a ticket. And he's going to get it immediately by email. Or he can instantly pay through NFC and so on. And the case is closed. If he was driving exceptionally reckless, going 200 through the town, then we can see on the top right that there is a button, revoke driver's license. I can take away in this very second his driver's license. He does not even have to give it to me. But now his certificate does not contain any information when he clicks on it. Just as we saw when the right to use a card was was revoked. And when I think that he is perhaps a bit shady, then I can do a few more checks when that is allowed by data protection laws. So easy, so secure, that perhaps in the future you will not have to have a physical document with you, certified by the government, but rather you show your ID to the police or authorities, and they can check more securely, efficient, exact, in-depth, and all of that more automated.
If we start such a mobile workplace, then we have not only traffic control, but also other possible functionalities, and we thought about it, even basically, and wondered how it can help in the case of an accident. You can write down the description without a pen and piece of paper. Not a speech, but a description. I can capture the location with my device, and I no longer have to write it down. Choose location, select, and then I take the identity of all parties involved. I can go to Sebastian, scan the barcode, and add his identity to the accident form, and send it, as you can see on the bottom right, via protocol to main system. The whole report is sent back to headquarters. And when I come back to the office, then everything is already ready for me, and I can put in the rest of the information. End of story. The same model can be used for burglary. So by a break-in, it would also be usable. And there are also many other situations where this could be functional, where efficiency can be drastically improved. That was the roadside check and police check. Prüfen für die Exekutive. Vielen Dank. Danke schön. Thank you very much. So now it is your turn, Sebastian. We have seen many different examples where two people can use their IDs, mobile phones and smart devices to give and receive data via the cloud. Now we want to show you another case. A hotel can also be like the authorities, but how would it work when they only have a normal computer and no other smart device? So we thought that Sebastian could go to a designer hotel and there is a laptop and he has his smartphone. He is asked at reception to show his ID. He can send his ID just as we have shown. He starts the app, links up with, in this case, not another app, but a home page, or whatever technology is available. In this case, he has to type it. The laptop could also scan it, or it could use NFC. We use the technology that is available in order to be as user-friendly as possible. Then Sebastian is asked, the Acme Hotel would like something from you. Just before anything else shows up, he has to click on Handout, and it arrives on the screen of the hotel. And now they can have it in a useful way. Not a black and white copy of an ID on a piece of paper, or from an old scanner that will get misplaced somewhere. They have only the data that they really need, and they can still use this information afterwards as needed. Just imagine that you come to a government office, and you just have to hold up your phone, and all the basic information that is needed will be collected. I think this is a large gain in efficiency, improving one's identity for other systems, for example, that of the hotel. We also have the fifth, ultimate case, opening up a new bank account. That only works with very specific security provisions. The setup is somewhat similar, a laptop, and in this case, it's not the laptop from the hotel, but Sebastian's home laptop and his smartphone. He is sitting there at 11 a.m. on Sunday, and he thinks, new bank, new life, I will start. He hands over his soul and accepts the terms and conditions and takes all of the accounts that they have to offer. And then it is a really easy process. It's the same thing as before. He starts the app and the bank uses the Utopia ID service based on Mia and Sebastian hands over the token to the bank with the technology that he has at his fingertips. Then he is asked, do you want to give all of this information because the bank needs it? And Sebastian says, yes. And now comes the deciding moment. Suddenly, there is no photo that a person can check, but rather he is being identified by a remote system through a website. Here is where Fido, which I explained before, comes into the picture. Earlier, he registered himself with this, with Fido, and that means that he can now use the second factor that we have integrated here. For him, it is simple and unnoticeable, because he can use his iPhone like he always does. He puts his finger on the fingerprint scanner, and bam, he is logged in. Not only logged in, an account was created by this action. We can see the data from the central system that is being given to the bank. And because you are not always opening an account, but more often just logging in, Sebastian will show us how it works to log in. And you would not believe it, but it is the same three steps. Start the app, get a token, and link to the other person and then approve the request. Again, the system asks if he really wants to release the information, and when he approves it and it is on his device, then he can use his fingerprint as the second factor, and then he gets to his bank account.
there are many new rules and regulations that are coming about. We believe that these rules are not finished being defined, and we believe that our system, as it is, will be completely compatible with all of these new systematics, because FIDO is becoming the new world standard for secure authentication on the Internet. So now, in the future, you will be able to, day or night, be secure. And when you want to change the background of the system to your data security concept, so that there is a certified signature with it, so that you can also sign the contract for the account, then that all works behind the scenes. You will not have heard, seen, or have anything to do with a verified or digital signature. Rather, yes, I want to, and then you use your fingerprint to confirm, and then it is done. That was the case of opening a bank account. So now we are done with the different cases. Thank you, Sebastian. Let me get to my conclusion. What does this mean for the user? Offline ID cards can stay at home, and stolen IDs can be easily deactivated and within minutes also reactivated on a different mobile phone, perhaps even without any additional costs for creating a new physical document. You do not need a password because you are using FIDO. We have therefore taken the most insecure element that we have in cybersecurity, the password, and eliminated it with the use of FIDO. You have this all in one. You have the physical world to show in the digital and physical world. Both work together with security and integrity on the internet with one app. You also have total control over your data. What you are handing out has to be approved by you, and the actions are being recorded for the case that you cannot remember. This opens up many new opportunities for the theme of participation in the future, and with that, many more gains in efficiency in administration. What does this mean for the government? Here, you will recognize some of the terms because they are exactly the same. The theme of participation is extremely valuable for the state in terms of efficiency, and that is just one of the many possible topics that we have touched upon. Examinations and quality control, and that goes along with better identification. That is the starting point. We are coming to a whole new ballgame in comparison with offline documents that can now be controlled. The digital public services that the government provides to its citizens. And that is the starting point for authorities and digitization. A digital future for their workplace. Otherwise there is just some lone policeman on the Kartnerstrasse or at the central square in Grammat Neusiedl, who is the only one who does not have a smartphone on him. And in reality that wouldn't be true because he would have one, his own private one. So how does the OSD ID management architecture look? If you are expecting such a slide, I won't do it. We will look at it a bit more simply. We are back at the model that you saw in the beginning. We need classic identity management and databases. And that is something that the Staatsdruckerei has offered for many years, from the collection of data, to the secure document, to the secure databases in the back, whichever database that should be. And today we are broadening our horizons. We want to vertically integrate from top to bottom into a new area that others have not really gotten into yet. We have put Mia on the top as the front end, and that is the central point. When you look at this app, that is not just thrown together, but rather we looked at all the small details and determined which functions one needs most often, and in which order, where each icon sits and where you can best click. Everything that helps guide the user to best take advantage of the app is there. The whole thing ends with Mia back end, something you will never have to see, because you live with the app, and that is as easy to use as possible. At the same time, it is also as secure as one wants to have it, following the data security requirements of every country. And that is the complete product that the Staatsdruckerei very happily has ready for use and offers to your government. We have it fully functioning, ready to go, starting today. Perhaps a few of you already have some questions in your mind that you would like to ask. On the cubes here, to my right and left, we will answer your questions in detail. I want to answer a few questions first that always come up. The first is, what do I do when my battery is dead? Then it is dead. Have you, or who has a kid, let's say, 10 years or older, try and get them out of the house with a battery, with a phone that is going to be completely full when they return. They cannot do it. 
The battery can be charged at work so that you can make it home with a full battery, but there are not really batteries that are dead anymore. But when it is dead, it is dead. It is just like when you forget your wallet and do not have any documents with you. What about when I do not have any cell service? We have already worked on this problem for the police, but look at the current distribution of cellular networks, or at least in Central Europe. There you are not going to have that problem. And right now there are seven or eight huge worldwide projects for building access to the Internet, so that people are always online wherever they are. And this will come in the next few years. That will work with a satellite-based solution via, I wanted to say hot air balloons, but I mean over balloon systems through drones and via Wi-Fi in the spaces where there is no coverage. We will all be able to be online anytime, any place, because that is the basis for the development in the next few years. What about when your phone gets stolen? We talked about this also. I can revoke my information or deny access to it from a remote location. This you cannot do with an offline document that you lose. I do not know what happens with it. And then very often we get the question, yeah, okay, giving out your ID, cool, but you guys make passports. Why does it not work with a passport? It works with the passport. Of course, we can use the same system to do this, and interesting that has already been tried. Between Australia and New Zealand, there is something like a virtual passport. Do we want to say virtual passport or MIA? I would rather say MIA, because we can do the same thing with MIA. We believe it will work over time, but it will take time. There are so many countries in this world that want to stamp into the passport, so that they can document when people come in and out of a country. We believe that the passport, because it is standardized worldwide, will have a long time before the current system will change. Technologically, it is possible already. MIA can do the same thing with your passport as with your ID. Two more things that I want to let you know. This is how small MIA can also be, building open systems. We are not limiting ourselves to special hardware, thus we are naturally also working on this. And when you pull it up, it might look like this. Sebastian could then go to Club U5 and use his watch, and the whole thing is done. And now to the second point, which I am particularly excited about. We can also give you Mia today if you want. Behind me on this white cube on your right hand side, you can sign up today and take Mia with you. This is only a look and feel demo and is not functional. You will not be able to send and receive IDs because we have a few restrictions on it. We only want that no mischief happens. There are no online functions on it, just example data. Do not get too excited, her telephone number is not on it. But when you have iOS or Android, you can take it with you. But now it's a bit mean, because for everyone who has a Windows phone, we have a nice packet of paper to give. So, yeah, but we know that with Android and iOS, we, depending on the country, we will reach 95 to 97 percent of the people, and the rest of the 3 percent are shared between four to five other operating systems. We have to stay realistic. Where can you get this? At the white cube there will be two ladies and a robot. Paula is not on it, but rather Paul. He is sitting at our company, and when you say that you would like to have Mia, then he will send you an email, with the directions as to how you can get Mia now, and how you can take the look and feel demo home with you. So now we have presented it to you. I hope that you are as excited as I am about what is possible. We are a, I have to go back to Martin's words, a small Austrian company. We are not from Silicon Valley. We are a small group and we are a strong and interesting elite group. And we have created something really interesting, I think. I invite you to try it out. There is no really new or disruptive technology inside. There are no virtual electrons inside or something like that. We have taken what is available and put it together as securely as possible, and thought about the process and how we can best integrate our system on all of the functions. We have made something evolving and not completely revolutionary. We have not completely reinvented the wheel on the topic of security and identity. These topics do not need to be recreated revolutionarily, but rather innovated and used in evolutionary ways. I have a favor to ask you now. The team that worked on Mia has not had any time on the weekends lately, and they have worked really hard, and we have worked through many nights, so please give them a round of applause.
Danke. Thanks, boys. Vielen, vielen Dank dafür. Thank you very, very much. But do not get lazy, boys. Now you have to go to the cubes and show people how it works. Now you can try out Mia for yourself. Please use this opportunity. We have a few drinks and snacks for you. Please also take this chance to take Mia home with you or to take a look at Mia. Thank you for your attention and come with us to have a look and celebrate with us what we have achieved here. Thank you very much.